All right. Good morning. It's really great to be here. This is my first time visiting Stockholm, so it's, everything's so exciting. So yeah, again, um, my name is Tomomi Mura, and today uh, I'm going to talk about my little Raspberry Pi project called Kitigam. It's all about cat. <laughs> so um, I'm from San Francisco, so to be honest, I'm quite jet lagged, sleepy. And I'm from an engineer, and I consider myself as an open web and open tech advocate. I used to be in a W3C member as well, so I'm all about web standards. And um, also this talk, you know, I'm going to talk about the hardware stuff today. I am a really newbie in this field, so I'm hoping my talk would encourage some of you if you haven't tried any hardware hacking. And that's my um, day job. I'm doing developer advocacy at a company called Nextmob. And although, you know, like despite of all the hard work I've done, you know, throughout my career, um, I think I'm most known as a cat lady of the interweb because uh, I got some 15 minutes of fame like four years ago, so maybe four and a half years ago when I created something called HTTP status cat. <laughs> so basically, I collected a bunch of cat photos and slapped in HTML, uh, HTTP status code, and boom, it went viral. So I'm like, damn. So now people still talk about this, and people still pinging me, tweeting me about this. I'm like, <laughs> all right. So this is a picture I took at a make a fair. So um, as a kid, I was growing up, I was always a crafty kid. So when I first uh, found out about this, um, Make of it about 10 years ago, so I was quite excited. But sadly, um, I always wanted to make something like robots and stuff, but I really never had a friend who could teach me how to wire and stuff. So I never really get involved in any hardware hacking or like electrical engineering in my life. Maybe I had a friend who could teach me how to play guitar and stuff, but not about the robot. So, you know, it's really hard to you know, get started something when you have no idea where to start from. But then I haven't done anything about, you know, like robotics whatsoever until I heard about Arduino. I would say it's quite a revolutionary product because this is really the first developer-friendly board. What it means by this, you know, it's everything's open source and they provided a lot of code samples and everything. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, when I s mean open source for the hardware and software, and software part means like IDE is free. And uh, again, it comes with a bunch of code. So of course I tried. But then, okay, so I had to write something called Sketch. And uh, this, um, the Sketch is loosely based on C. Like, Okay, I can kind of read and try to understand, or more like act as if I understand. And I can copy, paste, and stuff, but I wasn't quite happy because uh, not just the electrical engineering, I actually did not study computer science in the school, so I wasn't really academically trained programmer, so I never really knew how to code in C. I tried, but I'm like, I don't know, I'm not having fun here. But then to move on, I just uh, started using Raspberry Pi, and uh, this is another you know inexpensive board. But uh, unlike Arduino, Raspberry Pi is like a little computer, so you can run um, operating system like Linux, or if you want, you can install Windows Windows 10, right? So yep, you can pretty much do anything you can do in with a computer. So I'm like, yay! and more language choices. So uh, initially, I used Python to create some stuff. Then, you know, I'm a web dev. The language I love the most is JavaScript. I really want to use JS. Then I met Johnny5. Um, that's a JavaScript robotics framework. It is quite awesome as it sound, you know. And uh, this works with any Arduino compatible boards. And when you're using uh, IO plugins, um, that works with more platforms like Raspberry Pi. I'm like, yes, JavaScript all the way. I can really use JavaScript this time, right? So, uh, of course, I haven't gone through this uh, hello world. You know, when you're talking about hello world for the hardware, it usually means a uh, blinking LED. 
So, you know, that's a way you learn how to wire and uh, learn about resistance, how to calculate, you know, understand an Ohm's law, how to calculate it, how to make a light, then on and off. So, yeah, I've done this. And again, most people who have tried, you know, like um, hardware, might just try to blink an LED and that's it. But, you no, know, I wanted to do more than that. So, I created something called a KitaCam with Raspberry Pi using Node.js. So basically what it is, it's a, um, a Raspberry Pi camera app that comes with uh, cat facial detection. Like seriously. <laughs> so for the hardware part, I used the Raspberry Pi and camera module and a PIR sensor, which is a um, motion sensor. And the software part, yeah, of course I use Node.js and JavaScript, I mean the Johnny 5 and some other more in JavaScript and open source with some other goodies. So this is a kind of diagram how it's supposed to work. So I have this set up by cat food. Not actually donuts, my cat doesn't eat donuts. I don't think it's good for cats. And so when my cat is walking, you know, approaching the food, um, the motion sensor detects, hey, something's moving. So basically your cat here, so triggers camera and take photos. So um, this is a video I created to show this stuff. Because uh, I think I left it over there. I have real things, but I can't read the demo, so. so yeah. It's my kitty, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I get kind of stuck? Yeah. So that's uh, actually the product or my project. It looks like. Oh, hold on a second. So yeah, so this is a Raspberry Pi in an enclosed case. It's a Lego compatible case called the Smarty Pi. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and oops, I. Okay. And when it's open and inside, that's a um, motion sensor here. That like roundy stuff is motion sensor. And yeah, the so wiring part, it's quite easy because uh, it doesn't require any soldering. Or oh, I didn't even use a breadboard. The reason is a, um, this camera module, it's a five megapixel camera module, uh, made for Raspberry Pi, and it comes with this ribbon with a little you know, um, conductive part that you can just pop into the, the slot there. And even for um, PIR sensor, um, you can just uh, directly connect <laughs> And to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins with wires. So when I say GPIO pins, means uh, it means a general purpose input, output, input, output, and uh, you can read uh, data coming from hardware to the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, it's quite simple. I didn't really. I think a blinking LED might have been e even harder than this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when you're talking about programming Raspberry Pi, like again, I initially used Python because it comes with it and it's the most recommended language for Pi. Uh, and also comes with uh, Scratch. Um, that's great for kids. And Java, Ruby, and so forth, so on. And of course, you know, you can install Node.js. It doesn't come with, but again, this is like a Linux. So I install a Raspbian OS to the Raspberry Pi, which is a Debian based. So basically you can install anything that runs on ARM. So when I first started this project, it wasn't available uh, officially on Node.js.org, but now it is. So if you go to Node.js.org and slash download, and they just scroll a little down, you see somewhere called additional platforms. So you can find ARM binaries there. So you can just, you know, Download and install. Easy. So um, this is how uh, my app works. So first, detecting motion when kid is walking around and triggers camera and taking a photo. And then it goes to an image processing, the like facial detection. Then they send the photos to the cloud if the um, picture contains cat. Then at the same time, I'm using Socket to, you know, a view on the web in real time, and then finally send in SMS. And there are the actual uh, text stack I'm using. 
So Johnny 5, I'm using Johnny 5's IR motion object for detected motion using the PR sensor. And I'm taking a photo using a command line tool called Raspberry Still. Then uh, for the cat facial detection, I'm using Kididar, which is also open source fun and then GitHub, which is uh, probably the most like biggest awesome source of the whole tech stack here. And it's storing photos and cladinary and publish subscribe using and the PubNub. And uh, finally send in text message using Nextmo. So this is a diagram, I, the same thing basically I just explained how it works, kind of. So now I want to show how I actually build it, how I code it, basically, basically not build it, I mean code it. So the first step, I've used uh, Johnny5 with Raspberry IO. Again, um, Johnny5 is made for Adreno compatible boards, so you need to use Raspberry IO as a plugin to be able to use Johnny5 with a Raspberry Pi. So I think the code is kind of sort of self explanatory because first thing I'm doing is instantiating a board object here using Johnny5. Then when board is ready, and do some stuff. So the when do stuff thing is a way I'm um, calling a motion here. I mean, the instantiated motion object here. So again, uh, like I was saying earlier, this a little funky looking shape, dome shaped stuff is a motion sensor, PIR sensor, comes with uh, three pins. And one goes to the power, the other end goes to the ground. And the middle pin is send the data. So that's connected to the GPIO pins and Raspberry Pi, right? So uh, the data in the, here, it calls motion and five that motion um, P17, that's just the pin number that a data cable, I mean, wire is connected to. Then uh, two snap photo with this Raspberry Pi um, camera module, you can just use a Raspberry still command line. You know, just a command and some arguments and take pictures. So you, well, you can just try in a terminal. You can just type in and take pictures. So simple. So the cool thing about Node.js is, yes, you can execute this command, you know, shell commands in your code. So here, uh, when a motion is detected, so when you see the motion the on and event motion start, when it's triggered, I am um, using child process here. So in this case, in child process, it's a spawn method. What it does is basically spawn of the another, um, um, in this case, it's a show command. So it's basically executing a command line, command here, and some argument with it. So that's basically what it's doing. Then um, processing photos. So once that the photo is taken with the camera using Raspberry Still, I have to disper I have to process this photo to send it to um, other JavaScript file here. So um, like again, Nicole was saying, yes, Node.js is thing single threaded, but the thing is, well, you can kind of sort of you know dump the another process. Uh, I mean, yeah, dump the another like you know. A a script in a different process here. So I'm using this ch another child process here, but this time I'm using fork method. That basically creates another worker, so you can have some other things you know, work in the background. So uh, what a fork does is actually so they run in new instance of v V8 engine here. So the thing is, uh, the, I use this uh, hourglass emoji here. The thing is, I really needed to dump this process to another process, almost a thread, but it's process, because it's really time consuming. So in this uh, JavaScript file I created called detect cat from photo, uh, basically I have to convert this photograph to the canvas. And here I'm using this um, Kididar uh, open source, you know, cat face detection. That uses a uh, canvas too. And uh, many times when you think about processing uh, image on a canvas, you think of a two-dimensional array, you know, with height. Let's say if you have an image of 100 pixel by 100 pixel, that has to like loop through the each pixel to do the processing, which means you know 100 by 100, like what, 10,000? So anyway, it's really expensive <laughs> operations, I would say. So anyway, so if I don't really uh, dump this process to a uh, you know new, 
I mean, if I don't fork it to the new process, eventually the photo keeps taking pictures because my cat is around and taking photos and queue up everything. So it really stopped the whole app. So I needed to do so. So this is what the detect cats from Pond.js is doing. It's basically what I just explained. Um, making the picture into the canvas to give it to a KDDR, which uses canvas. So in the line, say a cat equal a KDDR and detect cat. So yes, this whole thing is running another process in the background. And I want to explain a little bit about this KDDR. I wish I wrote this. I didn't write this. This is open source JavaScript catfish detection library written by Heather Arsha. And it takes a canvas object and calculates location of a cat in the image. And API itself is quite simple to use. So that's the behind the scene. It's kind of complicated. Again, that's pretty awesome. I wish I wrote it. Um, so first, basically what it's doing is chopping up the images into the many windows and extract the data by uh, measuring a set of gradient from light and dark to, order, uh, to, to find edges. What it means by that, just making you know, picture in black and white, split and dark and light part and find edges. I'll show you the next slide. And I compare the direction of those edges to the edges find a known cat images. So it comes with uh, some sort of awesome neural network technology here that create in JSON file after training it, training this program using a bunch of pictures of cats and known cats. So this is uh, um, actual what's going on here, finding edges. And this image I borrowed from Microsoft. So yeah, that's a links there. It's actually quite awesome. You know, Microsoft has a group of researchers uh, doing this kind of research, you know trying to find a cat facial detection. <laughs> yeah, so the KDDR is actually based on this uh, Microsoft research. So this is what it is, so finding the edge of a cat. And uh, that's uh, nine points that they defined. So every cat has uh, those nine, is that right there? <laughs> um, nine points that kind of sort of look like this. So the, those points, like uh, the data sequence here, is, uh, starts from nine, and left eye, right eye, mouse, blah, blah, blah. So it's more in a point, so the cat face, faces. So if you have uh, photos like that, uh, that's uh, translated kind of into, I, mean, I don't say translated, but it's a defined point, like start with nine, and the first two numbers are coded in for uh, left eye, and then right eye, and so, so forth. And they use a, a whole lot of cat data collections, so many, like thousands of cat photos, and creating this, uh, you know, using positive with cat photos and negative with non cat photos, and creating some sort of JSON data. So when I'm using a KDDR to try to detect if my, my cat is there, it basically comparing those nine points, it's similar to the um, JSON data here it is. So anyway, so once um, the image is processed, and if cat is present in a photo, it returns to the original um, the code as a base64 uh, string. So I'm just taking this base64 string to send it to Cloudinary. It's just a cloud storage, and it provides really easy to use um, Node.js API. So I just use that. At the same time, I'm using a socket uh, to display the image, just using the URL and Cloudinary to display uh, on the desktop. So here I use a um, service called PubNub because I used to work for the company. And I get a free account, of course. But of course, that's something you can do easily with uh, you know, Socket.io. So this is what it looked like on the web. So those cats. Face all detected. Those are my friend's cats, actually. And then uh, I have the actual thing. That's my kitty, Jamie. But you know what? Of course, many times you detect 
wrong thing, like my Mary Mecco beanbag as a cat, even worse, look, this is me. <laughs> yeah, I apparently I'm a cat, yeah. So of course, you know, I can just uh, retrain this program using those positive and negative photos too. So this shouldn't recognize me as a cat. Okay. Oops. Oh, no. Hold on. No. Now I can't go back. Oh, here. Okay. Okay. So yeah, the final I'm sending uh, this link in a text as a text message as well. So I'm using Nexmo. So uh, actually, I just started working on Nexmo like a few weeks ago. So I'm quite new. So I was testing out the APIs, like SMS APIs, um, using my you know the Raspberry Pi project. So it was fun doing this. So yes, yeah, so it's kind of funny because every time it gets detected, my phone's beeping. You know, keep sending a text message. It's kind of annoying, but it's fun. <laughs> And those are my uh, favorite photos. So um, yeah, you know, it's always kind of cute to detect two cats, like multiple cats on one photos. So it's my cat and my friend's cat I was uh, taking care of. And another one is my cat and it's a plush toy. And uh, yeah, it identified only real cat. That's good. And another one is like, you know, it's cute to see my, when my cat's sticking a tongue out. The last one is uh, Kitty Venom. I actually did live <laughs> demo this and the live TV show before. So that was uh, the one that I got on the TV. That's kind of cool. So yeah, so this project could not be done without my awesome QA team. <laughs> Especially my lead QA, Jamie, is my kitty. And uh, Ginger Basil. Alice and Yugi are my friend's cats. And uh, one only one with a Twitter handle, Venom. That was a TV show, Kitty Cat. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, um, this whole project is um, hosted on GitHub. So you can take a look at. Oops. So for the next steps, um, I was thinking about hardware upgrade, and actually I've done this already. So initially I started out with uh, Raspberry Pi 2, and when I found out about New Pi, which is more powerful, I was like, yeah, of course. So I bought it before anybody else, and I updated it. And I also, uh, the camera I've been using wasn't really nice in the dark, so I think I need a better camera. And uh, for um, Yes, and upgrading Node. So yes, then the first time I started, like that was last year, I kind of used an older Node. I forgot why. I think it was compatibility with the other uh, core that I used, you know, other libraries that I used. But uh, yes, now I know it's upgraded. So I'm no longer using point to up. I think I use four or five or something. And all, all dependency is updated. And then maybe I'm using, uh, I'm gonna implement more features in the future maybe. It could be um, I'm going to use uh, RFID, which is, yeah, you know, like it can read this, this scan like a credit card or actually for cats, you know, cats has all microchips, right? So RFID should be able to scan a microchip from a cat so they can identify which cat. So now I'm, I have only one cat, but maybe I'm going to adapt another kitty sooner or later. So maybe I'm going to implement this. And uh, maybe I want to add some photo booth effect. So about four years ago, so I was in this uh, W3C project. I was doing some mobile web stuff, and I've created this uh, HTML5 Instagram kind of stuff. Actually, um, I shouldn't say that, because a lawyer from Facebook didn't like me using that word. But anyways. So, but that's basically, you know, photo effect uh, <laughs> uh, on a mobile phone, mobile web, actually, in the browser. So that time I have created some filter effect library, and that time, um, again, that was like almost several years ago. So uh, mobile web browsers didn't support walkers, but now, you know, the major browsers all do. So I think I should really rewrite my library itself. I think the library I created called the Filters JS, or something like that. It's on my GitHub, but it's it's all I ha I really have to rewrite, <laughs> so don't use it. Anyways, but I might want to implement it. And, you know, it's a total overkill to have 
effect, like a glamorous photo effects for my cat, but eh, why not? And then, you know, I saw this uh, selfie cat, <laughs> money the selfie cat on the Instagram, the actual Instagram, not my fake Instagram. Um, this was actually a GoPro project somebody have done. I'm like, yeah, maybe I want to make this with a pie or Adreno or something someday. But yeah, I think it will be the cool project. Maybe, you know, um, wire some button or something the cat can press and take photos. Then maybe it's more fun to use a photo booth effect. But you know, training cat is difficult. I don't think my cat will press a button to take selfies, so I'm not sure how it goes. Yeah, so anyways. All right, thank you. So that's about it, and thank you so much. Uh, actually, I should say, taxamit <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.